Greetings, Earth Travelers. Welcome to Astrology Roadshow's eighth episode, The Astronomy and Astrology of Major Asteroids and Outer Planets, Defining Important Points in Your Chart. As always, your likes, shares, and contact to astrologyroadshow.com and Facebook page are much appreciated. Please be sure to hit subscribe so you will not miss out on important information as we continue our sojourn into the Aquarian Age. So, how does planetary energy influence our lives? This is the hot-button question that separates many who are involved in the field of astronomy from the more spiritual science of astrology. Astrological scientific evidence is there to answer this question. But some still refuse to give it credence, or they provide alternative arguments that may not prove out in terms of manifestation. The door to more and more possibilities can be opened with a word worth repeating evidence. It is important to any research, and astrology provides plenty of this and constantly adds more examples as it fine-tunes itself. The word which is the missing link to bridge these science siblings would be awareness. Funny thing is, astronomers actually have a good basis for building up to awareness with their mechanical understanding and investigation of planetary placements, gravitational effect, orbiting cycles, birth and formation of solar systems, etc. They can actually partially answer the question, how does planetary energy work? But where does this lead and why learn about it at all? In ancient times, these two sciences were one and the same, or at least did work hand in hand. Apparently that shift from each other was not the best detour for mankind. And it is reminiscent of a family feud or rivalry that has had its time and is no longer relevant. To be honest, both of these sciences have only recently become somewhat sophisticated. Meanwhile, more and more astrologers are getting involved with astronomy and it would be good to see that effort also work the other way around without pretense or protest. The time has arrived for joining forces and communication to foster a quantum leap towards interpretation of our sky, raising the vibration of human intelligence, consciousness, and ultimately our evolution. This world is ready. As above, so below, a universal law worth investigation. In the spirit of tapping more into the great beyond, we will explore some of the prominent of the many asteroids and far outer planets within our solar system. These are well known among astrologers, but not always top of mind at this point when we interpret natal charts. As our knowledge of the solar system expands, so should application of good evidence. These newer puzzle pieces work in tandem with the established planets we readily use and have personalities that interact and support each other in the process. It's all about relationships, even in the cosmos. And these relationships can be decoded and understood as they apply within our blueprint. Let's start with a look at the more dominant asteroids. The important role played by Chiron as we are entering the Aquarian Age is discussed in depth in episode two. Through an internet search, you can easily look up the sign placement of asteroids on your birth date or visit www.astrologyroadshow.com for an asteroid ephemeris link located in the same area where this video appears. First discovered in the early 1800s, we have Ceres, Pallas, Juno, and Vesta, the big four. Keep in mind, all are smaller than our moon. However, they are close to us, being located within the asteroid belt. Together, they make up more than half the mass of that total area between Mars and Jupiter. Their established effects are feminine in nature, and they've been referred to as the goddesses among astrologers. Eros is also a fun one to include in our charts, and it is a major asteroid known as one of the love asteroids by astrologers. We've even managed to study it via a spacecraft that landed on this asteroid in 2001. It travels a bit closer and just inside Mars's orbital path. The placement of the asteroids is heightened if they have natal positioning at a critical point on your chart, such as midheaven or ascendant, and of course, whenever being transited by other planets. Also, if they are in a major angle or conjunct another planet in our charts, 
they will have a relationship continually serving that planet as a supporting actor with their own personality. The orb for effect is reliable at three degrees or less. These are the attributes assigned to the signs and houses for asteroid Cirrus within the natal chart. Astronomers also consider it to be a dwarf planet. That would make it the only minor planet not residing in the outer Kuiper Belt region, where the more recently discovered outer planets are located outside of Neptune's orbit. It is the larger of the asteroids and very spherical. It signifies mother, needs for nurturing, womanhood, attachment, and also self-love and care. It can also represent food or nutrition, a love for what is simple or natural, a reverence for seasonal changes and what that brings, and family devotion. It is similar or supportive of the moon's efforts, but it operates differently. It is reminiscent of the moon, but does not behave as an emotional trigger point, which the moon would be known for. Ceres is more of a practical application of all those mentioned characteristics as applied to sign and house where it is positioned. Next is asteroid Pallas, also known as Pallas Athena, and these are its characteristics within natal houses and signs. Her name suggests she's a hybrid of strength and female negotiating power, even representing feminine intuition within a man's chart. This is a goddess of courage and might combined with right. She is political, intelligent, and discerning. It is the point in a chart where connection to the father is heightened. This is an area where you will also experience and uncover patterns within your life relative to that house and sign area. Pallas Athena is similar to Ceres in that it takes the same amount of time to orbit the sun, just a little more than four and a half years. And here are the characteristics of asteroid Juno within the natal signs and houses. All of these goddesses have a relationship with Jupiter in mythology, by the way, and Juno is his wife. Oh wait, she is also his sister. It is quite the cast of characters out there, really. She represents what you need in a relationship and can be linked up with Libran qualities in that regard. But digging further is worth the effort since this placement can pinpoint the exact attributes that will serve to satisfy you and is a holy grail of what you truly seek in a relationship. And that area may not have a lot to do with Venus or Mars, the typical indicators of desire and passion. Juno takes slightly less than four and a half years to orbit our sun. The last of the big four is asteroid Vesta, known to be the brightest among them. It was the fourth to be discovered and is second largest next to Ceres. Here are the natal house and sign qualities. Vesta mythology has her as the keeper of the eternal flame, being tasked with never allowing the flame to die out. This is an area which is personally special to you and serves as an ultimate source of sustenance and reward. It is our own little flame inside. It represents an area where sexual appetite exists outside the normal boundaries, but without guilt. It is also an area where we can be of service somehow and or which will serve to help fulfill our ultimate destiny. In natal or sinistry charts, the conjunction of Vesta with a benefic planet such as Sun or Venus will enhance sexual chemistry. Vesta moves around our Sun a year faster than the others and makes that journey in a little more than three and a half years. And then we have asteroid Eros, as in erotic. It is orbiting more near Earth than the other asteroids. It is one among others out there considered to be love asteroids, but perhaps a bit more noteworthy and a great addition to include with natal chart analysis. Here are the sign and house characteristics. Eros, of course, is the Greek god of love and son of Aphrodite, another love asteroid. It is the area in your chart that signifies where you lose all control to sexual desire. In other words, what turns you on? It is unlike Mars in that where Mars is located in your chart depicts the way or how you make love, so to speak. Eros is where deep desire and passion resides and also creativity 
to an obsessive degree. It can be similar to scorpionic energy in that regard. There is likely an element of underlying animal magnetism to this area. Certainly a drive for satisfaction exists where Eros is located and makes its connection on your chart. Moving on to the Kuiper Belt and a couple of the outermost prominent planets discovered along with planet Eris in 2005. Episode 3 of Astrology Roadshow is dedicated to the astrological importance of Eris now that she has made a grand entrance into our collective consciousness. This planet takes a prominent position in empowering us going forward. It is a must to include on our charts. Near Eris, there is also the ovally shaped Haumea and Makemake. Although Eris is a name from Greek mythology, it may be the last of those Mohicans. A trend has begun where astronomers are now departing from the Greek mythological dynasty name game. Haumea has the fastest spin of any object in our solar system and makes its revolution once every four hours. This helps to keep its flat, non-spherical shape. Its orbit around the sun takes a little longer than Pluto's and is accomplished in 284 years. Since its movement through the signs is lengthy due to its outer orbit, the sign positions of Leo, Virgo, and Libra are relevant to the lifetime of this audience and shown here generally. Haumea is the name for a Hawaiian goddess of fertility and signifies creation through a series of rebirthing. Such will occur in the area it resides natally as that area will continually be updated from methods or ways that are outmoded. This is how it helps evolution occur in that area because the rebirthing happens over and over in the house and sign area where it resides it produces many experiences of endings and renewals there. This is different than how Pluto operates and its transformative abilities. The purposeful strength of Haumea makes sense and verifies patterns we see suggesting the significance of outer planetary energy the farther out planets exist in orbit. As mentioned in previous episodes, inner planets are integral to and help facilitate messaging from the more outer planets. Make Make is named after the creation god of Easter Island, and its orbit takes 306 years. Its influence as an outer planetary force would be applicable for the collective, as is the case with the outer planets. Its significators in that regard may have much to do with concerns our planet has top of mind these days, and since its discovery, perhaps including environmental and technological advancements. You can locate its positioning on your chart and ponder the personal possibilities. There is not enough information gathered which will be reliable to report by sign or house description, but soon there will be. Of great interest and also worth mentioning, there may likely be at least one more very large and very extremely remote outer planet that orbits within our solar system yet to be discovered. For now, astronomers refer to it as planet nine or X its gravitational force is keeping all the most outer planets corralled within a certain orbit to our solar system. Okay, that makes sense, and it is a sort of blind leap of faith loving that part. As a citizen of the Aquarian Age, it is a good exercise to investigate and explore Haumea or Make Make within your own chart and share this info with others to confirm, again using a comfortable three-degree orb. Here is what to look for and evidence of effect to gather. One, the house and sign area is experiencing an evolutionary pattern. What is it? Two, how are they triggering other natal planets by angle of conjunction, opposition, square, trine, or sextile? Three, what transits are happening to them and affecting them natally? Although they are the stronger outer planet, something has to give when they are being aspected. Four, what effect does their slow transit from your natal point onward having to the other natal planets on your chart? Keep in mind the outer planets interact longer together and that may be the most obvious way you can notice what the effects are. Also, it is helpful to keep in mind that the mission of the ruling planet of the house and sign placement where these far outer planets reside will be affected. 
it fleshes out the natal chart story because outer planetary forces are changing the landscape where they reside and therefore the intent of their host planet's functioning. If you have any questions or need assistance, please remember to always email ars at astrologyroadshow.com. Thanks much for tuning in. We'd love to hear from you and learn how your chart comes alive with the placement of these asteroids and additional planets. And I look forward to catching up with you again next episode.